Female infertility, particularly in the U.S., is a major public health issue. It's estimated that in the U.S., about $5 billion a year is spent on diagnosis of and treatment of infertility. This is a really great time to be working in the field of reproductive sciences, particularly in primates. The Oregon National Primate Research Center is one of eight such centers that you find around the country in the United States. The monkey is a great model for studying human reproduction because it's really very similar to the human in many ways. It's much more likely that the data and the findings you get in these experimental models will be true for than dealing with coming up with therapies and diagnostic approaches for dealing with human disease. We have some incredible resources that are set up to help scientists do their work. We have uh, uh, special colonies of monkeys like the obese resource. We have special imaging facilities that allow us to do magnetic resonance imaging on monkeys. All sorts of things that make the life of a science, uh, scientist very happy. A major project underway at the Oregon National Primate Research Center is supported by the National Institute of Child Health and Human Development under their program which funds National Centers for Translational Research and Infertility, of which we're one. This project here is comprised of four portions. Project one is looking mostly at the metabolic profile of our non-human primates. Um, we know that a Western-style diet is going to cause metabolic dysfunction in the form of obesity and symptoms that are similar to type 2 diabetes. And what we're really interested in in Project 1 is what effect um, elevated androgen levels in females might have towards contributing to that metabolic dysfunction and whether that mimics some of the symptoms we see in the human condition of polycystic ovarian syndrome. And in the second kind of component, we're also looking at the brain's control of both metabolism and reproduction and trying to understand at the neuroanatomical level where the dysfunction might lie when you have say, a Western-style high-fat diet and elevated androgens, how does this lead to dysfunction in the metabolic profile as well as the reproductive? Project 2 in the NIC tree has four goals. The first is to study the numbers and quality of small antral follicles in the ovaries and monkeys of all four of the treatment groups. Secondly, we're going to look at the structure function of the uterus as well because there is some indication that the infertility that's associated with PCOS is not all ovary based but may also be reproductive tract based. Third, we're going to look at the direct effects of the androgens and adipose factors on ovarian cells in vitro. And then finally, in the fourth goal, we'll be looking at the reversibility of these effects. Project three that my group is involved in is looking at the effect of diet and androgens on adipose tissue in particular. It's important to realize and to investigate the effects of things such as altered hormone levels, diet, and obesity on adipose tissue function so that we can discern what signals are emanating from adipose tissue that may regulate reproduction either positively or negatively. Project 4 is really the, the clinical correlate for the entire study. It really involves two groups of women First is a control group, and another is a group with high levels of androgen. And it's testing the hypothesis that androgen alone causes adipose dysfunction. And the dysfunction that is produced may also uh, result in factors that affect ovarian function. And this is, is being done with Dr. Dan Domestic at UCLA. So we're very excited about how our data in the monkey can correlate with theirs, and then we can take it further into clinical studies. I think the success of the center here really has to do with the collaborative nature and the kind of tight-knit community we have here. Uh, this project is a really good example because it's a collaboration between the Division of Reproductive and Developmental Science and my division, the Division of Diabetes, Obesity and Metabolism. And so that really allows both of our groups to utilize our expertise to study our 
question at a multi-organ level instead of just focusing in on one area. I'd like to think it, that at the end of the day that we will be providing new diagnostic uh, tools, a new idea of the etiology of PCOS that we can better prepare these adolescent girls for the future. It will allow them to have the normal fertility that they really want to have so that they can have uh, the babies that they want uh, and they don't go through life with problems with hyperandrogenemia.